now that the iconic tier system has been in rise of kingdoms for a couple of months i sort of wanted to revisit the topic of the worst equipment in rise of kingdoms this is because the iconic tier system requires complete blueprints which means some pieces of equipment that didn't make sense at all to craft in the past actually have some use case now and we're going to cover that later in this video however there's still some pieces of equipment in the game that i think you probably should never craft and it's important to talk about that because legendary equipment has a penalty for dismantling so it's important to know when you're about to craft a piece is it actually worth it or not should you avoid it and in this video we're going to answer that question but first what's going on guys cheers i can't believe it's been since august that i've talked about the worst equipment in rise of kingdoms and let me just start here by talking about the witches set pieces now the witches set is not part of the worst equipment in the game okay let me just be abundantly clear here there are people who should be crafting the witches set but i'm really not that convinced that this is like a must have set the only time that i think players should like really consider crafting this is maybe if they are about to migrate and they have a lot of gold that they want to burn and the reason for this is because if you look through this set is very expensive it's 20 million gold per piece and if you compare that to you know the four piece mask of the forest guardian set the four piece set bonus is identical for both right the purple set and also the legendary set it's both a five percent bonus so really that's like the nicest part about the set bonuses but also if you look at the gathering speed each piece is about maybe four or five percent difference which in the grand scheme of things you know we're talking about gathering speed and so the difference between the witches set and the mask of the forest guardian set is not how much you can gather it's how much you can gather in a day and that's only if you are perfectly timing every single you know sending your gatherers out right in other words upgrading from purple to legendary might save you a couple of minutes and you know maybe theoretically over time that would net you more gold for example and that could help pay this down but how long is that going to take it's probably going to take a long time so at the end of the day is the witches set a must have said I really don't think so again if you're going to migrate and you have to get rid of your gold absolutely craft the witches said you might as well get value out of the gold before you migrate to a new kingdom but I just wanted to start here and kind of give my perspective on the witches set I think you shouldn't feel like you need this set in my opinion but if you want to craft it go for it okay let's just start off with the trial of the lost kingdom here because this piece is shockingly bad I I, I don't really understand the strategy like the trial of the lost kingdom is literally a whale piece and it's not even good and the reason for that is because you when you buy the the vip bundle that you need in order to get the trial of the lost kingdom you instantly get the item right so i don't think you don't have to craft this or anything it doesn't cost materials once you spend a hundred dollars you get this uh, this weapon right uh, the weapon is not good if you compare it to like a special talented uh, purple weapon right the heart of the saint is literally better from a stats perspective like you literally once it is talented you it is better to use the purple piece but just to add insult to injury you can't even iconic upgrade the trial of the lost kingdom right like there's is literally impossible and that's because you can't get blueprints of this so like what what are we doing here you can't even put an iconic crystal into it you can't even get the three bonus base attack points or whatever i don't even understand that right because if you look at something like the witch's set for example you can at least put uh you know an iconic crystal in it and get the bonuses but you can't do that for the trial lost kingdom i don't understand this piece you get a very slight advantage on this when you first start the game and you buy it after that it's in the garbage it's useless it's dumb it's stupid no idea why anyone would do this so there you go just don't buy this i mean i guess the people buying this were whales anyway and they're gonna buy whatever they want but yeah next let's talk about the plate of the eternal empire this is the set piece for infantry and it gives you infantry attack and there's a lot of problems with the plate of the eternal empire the first being that the hope cloak gives you a better stat for infantry it also gives you more of that stat although you're losing out on the set bonus and also it's a lot easier to get the hope cloak and you're going to be getting the full blueprints much more frequently than the plate of the eternal empire right even going beyond that the quinn soul when it has special talent is almost as good as the plate of the eternal empire of course the plate of the eternal empire has the advantage of the iconic upgrades but at the end of the day why would you craft a piece that has worse stats and is harder to come by the argument that you could get iconic upgrades for it is true but we're still talking about a blueprint that's going to be difficult to obtain it just makes no sense you're going to have plenty of hope cloaks to go around i've crafted a bunch of these i still have a bunch of you know the ability to make a bunch more so even with the iconic upgrade system i just don't see the plate of the eternal empire getting any more use on the flip side of this is the shadow legions retribution this is the chest piece that you can get from the crystal keys for cavalry and here's the thing right you could make the argument with the hope cloak that because you can get it so frequently or you know you have the chance to get it from like crystal keys and stuff like that that you know if you're going to get it more frequently then at least there's that at least it has that benefit 
over a set piece and now with the shadow legions retribution this is a piece that you can get more frequently but the stats it's just so much worse than the chest piece for the set that it's not it's still not even worth it right because if you look at the dark lord's blessing this gives you cavalry defense which i would argue you would rather have over the cavalry attack and when this is a special talented it's ten and a half percent versus twelve percent cav attack i'd rather take the ten and a half percent cav defense yes you don't get the iconic upgrades but i think that you could use dark lord's blessing with the special talent until you get enough blueprints for the heavy armor of the hellish wasteland to craft this or if you're running two cavalry armies and you're thinking oh well can't i use this on my second one even still i would say no it's still not even worth it i would say craft the first heavy armor chest piece put it on your main move your dark lord's blessing to your second cavalry march and then just use that until you get a second heavy armor in the hellish wasteland that might take a long time especially if you're free to play but again the penalty for dismantling legendaries it's just not worth it you know it's such a short-term gain that you'd be throwing some materials essentially in the trash in my opinion and as you watch through this video right that's going to be sort of the theme where you have a main march that has your best gear on it and if you're running a second of that troop type like a second like a second cav army or a second infantry army typically you'll take you know your second best stuff and put it on that army right because you want to min max and so a lot of these pieces that are trash are ones where you wouldn't even use them on your secondary army right that's how you know that they're bad and that's why the shadow legions retribution in my opinion isn't really worth it next up we're talking about Greaves of the eternal empire and you know what that's actually good news you might think oh wow there's two infantry piece set pieces on this list that's really bad for infantry the opposite is actually true the fact that you don't need the set pieces for infantry is actually a good thing and the Greaves of the eternal empire suffer the same fate as the chest piece for infantry and that is you get infantry attack here which is not great and the alternatives are better for example eternal night is going to be much easier to obtain you can get it from the tavern you can get it from the lost canyon shop right so really easy to obtain this which is actually best in slot but beyond that the crocs humility this epic piece with the talent is basically as good or better than the vanilla eternal night okay so no iconic upgrades no talent no nothing vanilla eternal night the Karak humility with talent is probably slightly better if not they're basically even so that's really good for infantry because that means their leg slot is very cheap and easy to upgrade you can use Karak humility for a very long time and the upgrade path for eternal night is pretty abundant you're going to get these pretty often there's a guaranteed source of them which you can't say for most pieces in the game which is insane and so you run into that same issue again where like why would you craft greaves of the eternal empire when you have two easier to obtain pieces that are arguably better right i mean it just is what it is there's no real reason to go for the greaves of the eternal empire that's just my opinion on this it's very expensive just don't do it now in the same vein as that is the tacits of the hellish wasteland here we see a legendary set piece that gives you cavalry attack and in this scenario you've got the ash of the dawn which gives you a much more valuable stat which is cavalry health and you can get this from your crystal keys and you can get it from other things other ways as well so it's a little bit easier to get and likewise just like with infantry you have the gladiator legs the purple piece with the special talent gets you ten and a half percent cavalry health which arguably is just better than tacit of the hellish wasteland in basically every scenario so the fact that the set piece has the iconic upgrades here is kind of irrelevant it doesn't move the needle for the tacit of the hellish wasteland at all because your primary march is going to be using your ash of the dawn right and that's what's going to be getting the iconic upgrades and your secondary cavalry march is going to be using your gladiator with the ta with the special talent until you can craft a second ash of the dawn because they're so similar they're very effective in their own rights and there's just really no reason in my mind to craft the task of the hellish wasteland or even to search out or seek out to obtain the blueprints for this right like i have zero there's no i don't even have a fragment of this it's not even worth trying to collect next we're going to move on to the commander's boots this is archer attack eight percent and the reason that the commander's boots are so bad and it sucks right because commander's boots you can get them from crystal keys they're easy to obtain i've got three blueprints here just sitting there doing nothing you would think it would be great because then you could start to get the iconic upgrades for it but unfortunately there's first of all the set boots are just better here if we look at the dragon's breath boots we get seven and a half percent archer defense which it's just a more valuable stat for archers okay on top of that archers have the flame treads for the boots which the epic gives you five and a half percent health once you get the talent I think it's like seven and a half percent if I'm not mistaken here so yeah seven and a half percent health from an epic or eight percent attack from a legendary it just doesn't make sense the math is not mathing here but to go even further than that 
there are plenty of players who use the greaves of the glorious goddess right the leadership set if you get this with a special talent for your archers then all of a sudden this is a contender for best in slot right a lot of people have brought this to my attention and i'm very aware of this you could do a two-piece set bonus with the leadership set for archers and compete for best in slot with that right and i think depending on the scenario that actually might be the best in slot i think people have done testing videos on this i think it is pretty clear it's just kind of hard now because like a lot of people don't have this for archers so yeah it is what it is but in this scenario let's say you are running two archer marches in the open field well your primary one is gonna run one of these and then your secondary march can run the other one and then as you obtain the blueprints for these then you do the iconic upgrade tiers for each of them right and you know if you're an archer main you're going to be focusing on getting these from the universal uh you know choice chest and things like that and even if you don't have one or the other you have a good alternative in the flame treads and so the commander's boots fall to third place and there's just no there's just no reason for it right it's just so easy to get a piece that's better than it that you there's just no way in the same vein as that are the mountain crushers which again this is very disappointing for me because I have so many blueprints here. I would love to start using these, but unfortunately for cavalry, they actually have so many better options, right? First of all, boots of the hellish wasteland, a tremendous amount of cavalry health, which is great. And then beyond that, if you wanted to, you could use the cloud racers, which after the, you know, talent bonus, you get seven and a half percent, which is like basically the same thing as mountain crushers or you could even do something like windswept boots and you get a little bit of health plus some march speed which is actually a really valuable stat to be getting from your equipment slots mountain crushers are just outclassed in those in those ways and the fact that you can go through the iconic tier system more easily with them i personally don't think is a good long-term strategy okay you might be able to make the case that for your second calf march it would be better to run this than the cloud racers because you can go through the iconic tier system whereas you can't for the cloud racers which is true which would make mountain crushers better in the short term but in the long term eventually you will want to replace them with the boots of the hellish wasteland and then what are you going to do with these you're going to what put them on a third calf march nobody's really running three of the same troop type unless you're a whale in which case why would you do this why would you why would you craft not the best thing right because you are a whale so again I just think the cons outweighed the pros here unfortunately and that's going to do it for the seven worst pieces of equipment in rise of kingdoms now there's four pieces that I've actually changed my mind on okay and this is because of the iconic tier system the first thing we have to talk about is the sacred grips for infantry okay now typically I would only recommend players craft these if they are running more than one infantry march they're having a really hard time getting their hands on you know the set piece gloves which means they're probably a free-to-play player right um that's really it i think these sacred grips are something that you could consider crafting these days and hear me out are these best in slot no i don't think they are okay but they're not that different from the van braces of the eternal empire they're giving the same stat right they're giving more of it but you're losing the set bonus and you'll be getting these for free from your crystal keys right so if you are a free-to-play player or maybe a low spender right and you're running two infantry marches well then obviously your best infantry march is going to use the best in slot option which is the van braces of the eternal empire because the four piece set bonus is so important here and what that would look like would be a set piece weapon helmet gloves and boots right and then you would use the hope cloak and the eternal knight for the other two pieces right so you'd get the four piece set bonus and then for your second march you would use i uh, eventually you would use the kvk weapon and the kvk helmet right because that's how you're going to be able to, to get more blueprints for them and progress those through the iconic tier system and then because you're doing that you're not really going to be getting the four piece set bonus because then you would have to replace the chest and the legs which we've already talked about in this video the chest and legs suck for infantry and so therefore because you're not even going to be getting that bonus by using the kvk pieces then there really isn't a downside to going for the sacred grips in that scenario right and you get them for free so you might as well do so you do the sacred grips and then you would still do hope cloak eternal night and then for the boots you could do something like shio's return right now shio's return is i can't remember if shio's return was a piece that i said was bad i'll maybe talk about that in a minute but what i'm trying to say here is that there is a scenario now because of how important blueprints are that i would say going for sacred grips makes sense in the past even for your secondary march i would say you should probably save up to get two copies of the van braces of eternal empire because it is best in slot which is kind of true uh, but now i just don't see that being the case it's more important to be able to go through the iconic tiers for a piece eventually 
than it is to have slightly more of a stat and you're going to progress through much slower and it's going to be very hard to do for free to play so sacred grips i've changed my mind is it best in slot no does it is it trash it is no longer trash i think sacred grips is completely fine for some players if you're a whale or a medium spender probably don't craft them right uh unless you really wanted to but yeah it, it is what it is in the same boat of that is actually ian's choice right um ian's choice is giving you archer attack which is not great but if you look at the set piece for archers you're also getting archer attack and so the argument for never crafting ian's choice and the reason that ian's choice was so bad for so long is because the dragon's breath set gave you a set bonus and in the long run you'd be better off with that set bonus however these days um, a lot of people have come to the conclusion that for archers specifically you do not need the six piece set bonus i like the six piece set for archers it's just a very straightforward build for for my mind to keep track of but like if you're going to be building two archer sets right like let's say you are an archer main you're running two archer margins in the open field i'm not right uh, but if you were then you would do all dragon's breath for one set and then the second set would be something like you know the kvk helmet with the kvk weapon well now you're not going to get the six piece set bonus right and so you've already broken up that set and earlier we talked about how the glorious goddess uh legs and boots could be considered best in slot and so you could do that with the kvk pieces and then the other two you could do you know the crystal key chest and the crystal key gloves right and so just like with inventory for your second march you now have a use for the ian's choice especially because it literally gives the same stat as the set piece right so like they were comparable before the only differentiator being the set bonus and now you know because having access to blueprints is more important now than ever i think the ian's choice are no longer a bad choice ironically they are probably not best in slot but you know they're they're completely fine to craft if especially you're running two archer marches now in the same vein as that and i'll just touch on it here the milky way totally fine to craft right in the past i would not typically recommend players do this the archer health from the set piece was close enough plus you got the set bonus so really it's like why would you do it right why would you give up a set bonus for the milky way for an extra one percent now it makes sense you can do this you can craft the milky way you could use it with the kvk helmet and the kvk weapon you could pair it with the glorious goddess two piece that i talked about before and the ian's choice and boom there you go milky way completely fine you could definitely use this this is no longer a bad piece bad piece in my mind okay tons of archer health great piece definitely you can use this these days also in the same boat as that is the tacit of the war god now this one's a little bit iffy right i still don't love the tacit of the war god because you actually have two options that are better than it right you've got the set piece which gives you a set bonus so therefore i think it is better but also you have the glorious goddess set which i which is better right objectively this also gives you a set bonus right so there are two legendary sets that are better than the task of the war god however let's not pretend like it's easy to get set pieces right it's, it's not especially for free to play so if you got six tasks of the war god sitting around and you're going to be running two archer marches in the open field well i mean you can consider using tasks of the war god over something like the set legs because let's face it they're the same stat right they're the same side it's not like there's a massive difference between these two items the difference was the set bonus and you know for your second army you're probably not going to be getting a set bonus to any meaningful capacity anyway so test of the war god no longer a trash craft but um this one's a, is it's a little iffy right it's a little iffy you probably would rather go for this or this so yeah it is what it is and then finally we'll talk about shio's return real quick i don't remember what i said about this in the past i might have said that this was a, was uh you know it's not bad but you know it just it didn't really make sense to go for this because you would go for the four piece set bonus these days i think for your second infantry set you can totally use shio's return as a matter of fact i'm using it on my liu che if you take a look here i actually have the iconic four on him okay so i'm already getting the the five percent march speed and once i get enough materials i will be bringing him to fleeted footman okay i'm getting that extra five percent uh the, basically the cool part about shio's return is that you have a guaranteed way to get it through the lost canyon and you also can get it from crystal keys and so you're going to be getting a lot of shio's return over time and basically because of that you can guaranteed eventually get this uh you know basically 10 percent bonus march speed for infantry which is great and that was the reason that people ran the four piece set bonus to begin with right you get the 10 percent infantry march speed right so now she was return has an ability to get that i understand that you know you have the ability to get the iconic march speed on the set piece as well i get that but just like we talked about for, for archers running things like the kvk set and running milky way and things like that for infantry you could run the kvk weapon and helmet then you could run the hope cloak and the eternal knight legs and then you could run sacred grips for the gloves like we talked about before and boots you can run shio's return 
and all of a sudden like that's a really solid set you're still getting some march speed there from the iconic upgrades and you can actually do the iconic upgrades and then your other infantry army could be running the four piece set bonus plus the you know hope cloak and and, and uh eternal light so shooter's return has a little bit of a return and has a little bit of a, a comeback here okay is it best in slot i don't think so i haven't looked into that in a while actually now i think about it but um shooter's return is a decent craft these days which is uh pretty good i'm glad to hear that and that's pretty much it i just wanted to give you guys my updated thoughts on some of these pieces i think some of them have much better use now because of the iconic tier system than they did before and i just wanted to give you guys my thoughts and opinions on that because if you you know maybe watched my older video you might get the wrong impression for things like the shio's return or things like sacred grips or ian's choice so things have changed there are uses for these pieces now which is very good especially for free to play players if you made it to the end of this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it comment down below your thoughts on some of these pieces do you think there's any awful pieces that i missed do you disagree with some of the things that i said here i would love to hear from you in the comment section below while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace